it's my pleasure to introduce my good colleague and manager, Shadan Gao. I think she sort of asked me to take part in this as well. We tried quite hard, to be honest, to find a somebody else from the Atlantis community to co-chair with her. Um, and that didn't happen, but I get the feeling that this is intended to be very much a gathering of equal minds rather than a session being led by one person. Now, Shadan has been in the learning advising profession for over 15 years, and her last five years have been heading the team of learning advisors at Te Tauka Student Learning at Victoria University. Now, uh, we've already mentioned this, I think you might have heard about it as part of the conference um, discussions that in the 2021 Atlans Journal, Shaudan and her colleague Julia Tanner from Massey um, published a report on a survey of learning centres, which has gone on over the years, started by Catriona Cameron several years ago now, which takes place every two years. So we're getting quite a nice sense of, I guess, the, the mood of the learning centre profession. And I'll put the link in, although, of course, unfortunately at the moment, because our website host is down, we can't access it. We'll put that in very soon. Um, and so the idea of this presentation, I think, is just to pull people together to think about the changes that we all know about, COVID, um, international uh, numbers coming down, Tekukinga, all of those sorts of things, the introduction of the pastoral care code. So the session is asking, what do the changes mean for learning support services and how can we evolve and move forward? So, ciao down, over to you. Thank you, Deb. Kia ora, everyone. My name is Xiao Dan. I'm the manager of student learning. Um, as Deb said, I have been a um, learning advisor for many, many years. Now, today's session is actually less about me um, telling you anything from my thoughts, but it's more about an opportunity for us to share. Um, I find that very often when I attend conferences, that even though we have presenters and we go there thinking we'd love to pick up ideas, but very often it's in my conversation with the participants in the um, to the conferences that I learn more as well. So I kind of feel that one of the my main motivation today is that here's a chance for us to sit down and share what we have been doing and our thoughts um, with each other. Particularly, this particular conference is actually online. We we don't quite have that opportunity of sitting down and having a cup of coffee with each other. So I thought, let's just create an, a, a venue to for people to to talk to each other. Um, I quite often um, think about, I was telling somebody else the other day that I love going to the beach, the West Coast beach, actually, in New Zealand, um, after a storm. And one of my favorite um, places to go to is the Kapiti Coast. And I love that because there's a lot of driftwoods, um, lots of treasure that you can find. And to a certain extent, I feel that um, we have been through lots of storms in the last two or three years. And this is the time for us to find the treasures, to find all the precious things um, on the beach kind of thing. So so like I said, it's not really about me um, sharing anything with um, my thoughts, but more about you sharing thoughts um, with us and with each other. Ultimately, what I would like to actually do is that based on the ideas from you, I would like to collate them and feed them into um, the project that Deb and Mo Mona and um, Ruth, wasn't it, that was they are doing um, about the... Um, Profession, you know, professional training, but also I think um, Adlands has a role to play in terms of advocacy for us as as a group of professionals. So maybe that's you no, know, that's one of the things that came out of um, the survey that I did with Julia is that how do we actually bend together more as a group to advocate for our people? So that's that's my thinking, but um, just very initial thinking. Um, so. Let's just before just to lead into our discussion um, later, I will be putting you into um, breakout rooms. If we think about the last few years, 
even with the research that um, Ketriona has done, the survey that she had done way back in 2018 and the recent one that we have done, we have actually as a sector have been through a lot of changes. I mean, the most recent one for um, people, our colleagues um, from the politics sector is the, the massive restructuring within your sector. Um, we <clears throat> also have been through this pandemic where we have to be um, be very agile to how we deliver our our services. We have this um, particular conference. We have a lot of focus about um, neurodiverse students. Well, so the the students' needs are changing all the time. Um, how do we then, as a sector, kind of correspond, um, kind of respond to those um, changes? We also now have, um, to a certain extent, I feel that we are, even though we try we provide our service in a very holistic way but also but quite often we try to ring fence um, our service to focusing on academic um, support but very often we are not necessarily asked but we have to provide that kind of pastoral care well-being support for students and now there is the pastoral care code what does it actually mean for us as a service so it has been um has there has been a lot of changes not I'm not even mentioning anything that's to do with um, the personal people's personal life in the last two or three years a lot of us had been sick we have family that hadn't been well so just focusing on the professional side there have been a lot of changes thrown our way and sometimes we'll probably feel a little bit like that um that we are there's a, so much stuff that's been happening that we feel like we are under we under this pressure we're carrying this massive burden um I also kind of feel that I, I took this is actually a photo taken by my my husband in the Tararua somewhere um I like this picture <laughs> at the moment mainly because I feel that learning advising for a lot of us is a well-trodden path but at the same time there seems to be some kind of um things that are obscuring the our path a little bit so it, it is a bit the visibility of what we're doing is a little bit threatened to a certain extent so I kind of feel that we then this is a good time for us to have a pause rather than letting things just go and happen to us and not pausing to actually have a think about what have, what are we doing? Where are we heading? What have we been doing? How can we do that more? Is there any more that we can do? So this is why I, like I said, that I there was another reason that motivated me for this particular session. So what I'm actually going to do next is to put you into breakout rooms. You are going to do most of the talking and coming up with most of the ideas. Um, I have um, hopefully um, um, our our lovely tech people have set helped me set up six breakout rooms. So will be all everybody will be all automatically assigned to the room. Um, in your breakout room, I would like you to obviously introduce yourself and nominate one person to record your ideas on the mirror board. I hope that um, if you're not familiar with mirror board, feel free to ask somebody who's more kind of comfortable with it to to be the one doing the recording. And nominate one person to later on report back and share up to three ideas um, from your group to the wider group. So we're going to spend about 10 minutes talking to one question and we come back for a quick probably um, five to 10 minutes report. It has to be quick and short. And then I'm actually going to send you away to back to the um, breakout room, have another chat and come back with a third lot of reporting. So I will share with you the um, the breakout room, in um, sorry, the link in a second, but I will just show you very quickly what I'm trying to get you to do here. So this is one of the questions. Um, so what are some of the new services, new teaching, learning methods or resources or different ways of operating have you or your learning centers developed or have adopted in response to all those changes that we talked about and beyond um, over the last two to three years. You will see that when you get assigned to the, when you have access to the board, I have the rooms all set up. So if you are in room one, um, you can record your ideas 
in room one. Um, these these sticky uh, sticky notes are already there. But if you have more than the ideas, I um, the number of sticky notes I've assigned you, you could use the sticky notes um, on the side and put more on the board. Does that make sense? Yep. Great. Now, so I'm going to now send um, put the link in the to the mirror board on the in the chat. If you could go and have a um, click on the link, it shouldn't ask you for any um, shouldn't ask you for any um, sign in. It should just allow you to join. I can see people here now. Just a little bit of um, small things here. If you get a bit dizzy looking at all the arrows going on the board. A little tip here is that this little tiny um, triangle is pointing. If you click on it, that's where everybody's um, will they will they will appear. But if you actually unclick it, that's when all those little triangles will disappear. All good. So great. Um, now I'm going to stop sharing, and I'm going to make sure double check that our tech person has is all ready for to assign us to the to the room. Yeah. So I. Great. So you can see the question on the board and you can find the rooms that um, you're in. I will talk to you later. 10 minutes. Thank you. Okay, welcome back, everybody. I know that some of you might actually have struggled to um, find the corner of the board that I've um, shared with you. It's always a little bit of a challenge uh, with technology, but the session being quite um, short that I actually didn't have time to give you a chance to play with it. However, most of you managed to record your ideas on the board. It's just at a different corner of the board, so it doesn't really matter. So very quickly, we would like you to, um, for the sixth group, uh, each group, very quickly share um, two to three ideas because I would like you to have the next discussion as well. So group one, I think is Dawn's group. Um, um, here's your corner. I think this is where, where you guys were recording the ideas. Who would like to um, speak on behalf of your group? Um, I'm happy to speak on behalf of our group. There was a lot of uh, similarities, I think, in, in what we're doing, but also some differences. Um, things that came up was a lot more focus on embedding within programs and the embedding might involve collaborations with uh, kaitaka waenga, kaiafina, library staff, um, tutors, other other services within um, our places of work. Um, probably a little bit more pastoral care, a little bit more follow-up to see how students are going and being a bit more proactive. Um, blurring boundaries a little between content and teaching to get that real wraparound service and then a focus on the development of video content online resources and resources that can be asynchronously used which um, we commented that a lot of time going into the development but once they're set up um, it's actually less time because you're not having to go in and, and redo those classes or those that content for new groups. Great thanks Dawn. Now group two I think this is group two's notes. Um, would you, would someone from group two kind of um, summarize what they have said? I can do that. I think we were group six, but that doesn't matter. Um, so a couple of things I've already mentioned. Uh, you, you can see the, um, the videos, for example, creating video uh, of our workshops um, and also um, learner voices. Um, flexible working hours. So moving to more flexible working hours was something that was discussed. Uh, to meet better meet the needs of the learners um, and also you know the, the focus the move to more online appointments and online workshops as well as face to face um, we uh, talked about at ARA they we have adopted you know uh, our relentless focus on equity approach which is part of our um, strategy one of our ARA strategies um, and, and what we've done is we've opened up longer quick questions in the library space so we're very visible in, uh, amongst the Māori and Pacific collection and um, and encourage learners just to drop in, um, removing barriers for um, a, um, to for referral, for example, to learning services. They can drop in for a needs assessment. They can develop relationships with the Māori and Pacific advisors um, and get their needs met in that way. Um, they are often brought in um, by the pastoral advisors and actually um, it's, it's, it's an initiative that's working very well for us. That's great. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Now, group three. I think group three, have, has group three recorded? Yes. 
Here you go. Who, who from group, group three would like to summarize? Not sure. So maybe I will just pick out a couple of things um, that haven't been um, um, mentioned earlier. I like the Kai idea. It's always a good way to <laughs> bring students in, isn't it? Um, same thing about the pastoral care um, that actually is, is one of the things that has um, become more more of a feature of our of learning for, for us, for learning advisors. And go and visiting the site itself, going to the students rather than waiting for students um, to come to us. Um, multi modes delivery, that's definitely a key theme that's coming through. Does that, does that do the sum, the, the, um, Justice, I, I didn't actually participate in that group, so, so I'm not quite sure. Um, I'm going to actually stop here because I would like to give people a bit more time to think about the next, uh, to talk about the next question. So the next question I have here on the board is, do you have other ideas? So we talked about the, some of the things you've already done. Are there other things that actually you think will help our profession to stay ahead of the game, not just respond to changes that are happening to us, but how do we stay ahead of the game? So again, I would like to, to put you, um, hopefully um, the, our etude people can automatically assign people to the group. So you might or might not be talking to the same group of people. But again, um, if you could record your ideas and if you can't find this um, space, like the other groups have done, just record it anywhere on the board and I will move them in later. I will collect them later. That'd be okay. So we'll probably this time we'll only have about five minutes and then I'll bring you back together. Welcome back to the room. Um, even though it's a 40 minute session, it actually goes by, past very quickly, doesn't it? Uh, we really should have more time to talk. Um, so what I'm actually going to do, I think um, I don't want to impact on the next session. I know it is 11.40 already. I will send um, this mirror board link to you again. So you could actually over the next few days, um, feel free to go back in and um, and put more ideas. Or if you haven't managed to type anything in, feel free to um, email me later on. I'll send you my email address um, if you can't actually um, put the ideas on the board email the summaries from your discussion to me. I think it's been fantastic. I actually just listened, I went into two particular rooms. It seems like the consensus um, was more about sharing that rather than us individually kind of trying to struggle away, trying to create new resources, resources, new ways of doing things, that we have a channel that allowed us to more, share more about what we are doing. And maybe a channel um, that allowed us to together co-create certain resources and things that we could share within our sector. So I, I haven't actually been able to join the other rooms. I'm pretty sure there's some really great ideas there. So hopefully, um, I'm just going back to the to my um, to my board again. Um, so hopefully, what we are thinking about the key thing I have. Um, uh, what what I will do next is I will collect all the information. But one of the things that I have um, thought about and it's really hard is I actually really like um, what Deb. Um, what <laughs> excuse me, Robbie was saying this morning about you are the difference um, and about committing to doing something about it. And I kind of feel that one of the things that we, and particularly when there are lots of changes happening to us, we need to find a way that we take control of all the changes, um, that we actually are proactive in, in leading the change rather than having changes done to us. So what I would like hope that this today's session is the beginning of us thinking together as a group of how we could take control of changes um, that happen to um, that, well, not let ha changes happen to us, but lead the change instead. Um, so hopefully this session is just the beginning of a conversation for all of us and that you enjoy talking to each other, but please do continue to add your ideas to the board. I'm sorry that actually the board it might, might, might not have worked for everyone, but yes, I will send you my email address later. I'll get Deb to send you my email address so you can send your information to me. That's all from me. Thank you very much. Unmuted, Deb. Unmuted, Deborah. Thank you very much, Sarah. <laughs> okay, so there are a couple of um, parallel sessions now in Room Tahi on student centeredness and in Room Rua on international students. This is now an opportunity. It's supposed to be a special interest group for managers or anybody who just wants to keep the conversation going. So you're welcome to stay or go. Thank you.